the entire March and into April period was a tremendous time of anxiety for all of us. I don't think any of us in our wildest dreams could have imagined what the true lived experience would be. Yeah, it was intense. The stakes got really high really fast. Once we had our first patient, it felt like the next day we had five, and then the day after that we had 15, and then we had 30, and it was just starting to explode. When we got into mid or late March is when the ED changed, uh, when uh, the city changed, and when our country changed. I would never, even in my worst nightmares, think that this would affect me and my family as much as it did. I told her, this is it. This is how I'm gonna die. You know, I'm not gonna make it through this. She's like, mommy, I need you to fight. When I woke up, I'm looking around and I see the calendar and it says the 22nd. I go, it's the 22nd? And the nurse says, yeah, you've been in a coma for 11 days. take an oath as a physician to, to be out there on the front lines to help where you're needed. You have that responsibility that comes with the skill. It's what it means to, to be the professional. This is actually the ultimate test we were put up to for what we trained all along. You know, if you asked me six months ago, how would you do in a pandemic in an ICU and helping 36 families in a day? I think I probably would have paused, but when you're faced with it, you just jump in. And so by the end of your shift, you're just flat out exhausted. You've been moving around the department. You've been sort of thinking very critically about these patients and sort of the, the mental exhaustion that comes along with the physical exhaustion. Some of them were staying in hotel rooms and they'd just kind of go to work, go to the hotel, get up, go to work. Just really impressive. It was just amazing to see the talent that we have across this organization at every level. The priority and the focus was to take care of the people of Boston and coming in and showing up and taking care of each other. Our staff not only had to be nurses, physicians, respiratory therapists, they had to become surrogate families. And there are countless stories of our staff sitting at the bedside while somebody was taking their last breath so that they would not be alone. I knew our patient was Jewish, so I recited the, the Jewish prayer for the deceased called uh, Mourner's Kaddish. I just put my hand on his chest and recited it, and uh, I felt like that was the appropriate way to send him off. It just filled me with such gratitude for to be working with such fabulous colleagues that just work and move from their heart, you know. Knowing that, you know, family members wasn't able to be here, but as a stranger, you promised them that you're gonna be with them all the way. It was just, wow, this is powerful. You're just in this panic and afraid and you don't have any family. It was just really scary. I just was so weak and coughing. I couldn't catch my breath. The doctor said your oxygen levels are really low. And we're thinking the best um, thing to do right now is to intubate you. It's hard to even describe. It was, it was very, very scary. Annie developed COVID while she was pregnant, so Ava, her baby, came to us as a premature baby. And I remember looking at her and I said, please don't let me die. I have two babies to take care of. She held my hand and she had tears in her eyes and, and she told me, you're, you're not gonna die. Watching her go through this was just beyond words. I couldn't imagine. I just wanted to do everything I could to make them feel close to Ava. You know, I was just grateful um, that the nurses were giving her the love that, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't give to her because I couldn't come here. I asked the doctor, I said, I heard somebody mention that we were patient one and two, is that right? And he said, yeah, you and your wife were the first two COVID patients in Beth Israel, Boston. God blessed the doctors and the nurses to have me, you know, come out of this because there's a lot of people that have not. I'm a walking miracle. I love my nurses. They were so good to me, you know? Everything they told me they was gonna do for me, they were there for me. I fell in love with them. They saved my life. They became my family. When we did have a win, like an extubation, that felt so good. And I'd say, you know, we just extubated your dad. And like, the relief 
Um, it's the best feeling. And then on top of it, around us, the community, united, people sending us support through clothing and flowers and food and well wishes. It was really powerful knowing that people were sending their love and support and when they couldn't be here in person. COVID-19 was probably the best career reaffirmation process I've ever gone through. I'm not going anywhere, I'm staying right here. I mean, I knew that I liked it, but I think I found out how much I love it. <laughs> it really reinforced for me that it takes a team. It takes the diversity of skills and experience to really pull something like this off. Our respiratory therapists, our unit coordinators, our palliative care doctors, our physical therapists, our chaplains, our social workers, the environmental services folks who clean the rooms, people who work in the cafeteria and kept kept us fed. The list goes on and on of people who showed up to a hospital during COVID and put their lives on the line. And all those people are heroes. It's gonna take all of us working together. It's gonna take all of us hey, hey, to make it to the other side. It's gonna take all of us Working together, uh, it's gonna take all of us to make it to the other side.